What's up y'all, this is Dez. I decided to just remake this video on the Tanita so that you guys could have a, a good baseline and, and know exactly what uh, we're trying to accomplish by doing these body composition tests. But the point here is not where you are now, it's about how we can improve, okay? So I'm just gonna go through this right quick so you'll know exactly uh, what you need to be looking for. So go ahead and pull out your sheet, which you should have one of these. If you don't have it, send me a text message. I have a picture of it that I can send you. Uh, but then of course you have to print it or watch the video on your computer so you can actually look at your statistics as I go through it. Okay. This top box here uh, is the input. It's got your body, uh, type your gender, your age, your height. And, uh, I put a pound in there guys for your clothes weight. This is actually mine. So I didn't put any weight for clothes or anything like that. So next is the results box. So your, your weight. All right, as measured by the scale, your actual weight. So it should be something pretty close to your scale at home. Uh, I find the weight scale to be very accurate. So if your scale is off by three, four, five pounds, might be time to put some new batteries in it or maybe get another scale, okay? Next after that is your fat percentage as measured by the scale. Now don't be discouraged by the fact that mine says 16. This scale does not measure accurately someone with my level of muscle mass. Uh, so. And I have, uh, you know, I do some other types of body fat testing. So when, when you have, uh, I guess what you call excessive amounts of muscle, it doesn't tend to, to comprehend that very well. So don't be discouraged. We have some people in our group that are uh, sub 20% uh, ladies. So don't, there's no excuse. You know, age, gender, doesn't matter. You can get your body fat percent down. Or if your body fat is very high, then that's something we need to really work on. And so it starts with your diet, obviously, because you guys are working out. So you need to be consistent in your workouts and you need to come and also be disciplined with your diet. Now, looking at that fat percentage, if you go down here, it'll give you a desirable range for your age group. So you should be somewhere within that desirable range. And that's just for general health reasons. So you stay within that, that general desirable range. That means you're less likely to incur uh, you know, disease and sickness and illness. So that's why you want to be in that, in that range so that your immune system, your metabolism is operating at its most efficient, um, you know, for your age group. Now you can be below the minimum number on this. So don't take that as a limit. It's definitely something that can be beat. Okay. So then, uh, if you look at the bottom here, there's an indicator for fat. All right. So there's, a, there's that zero and then there's two dashes on each side. You want to be in between those two dashes or somewhere to the left of it. Okay. So lower body fat is better. Okay. Lower body fat is better. Okay. Next is uh, your fat mass. It's just the percentage of your weight. And so it just translates it to pounds. Okay. So once you decrease your percentage, your pounds will go down as well. And uh, your weight will likely go decrease as well. So we're working on doing all those things, which is why we do resistance training and cardio and calisthenics and plyometrics so we burn fat all right we got lift weights and build muscle all right the only way you're going to get toned is if you build muscle all right but then you got to burn the fat through your cardio and your um and your uh, high intensity workouts okay uh next is your fat free mass which is muscle and bones all right so that in pounds and then your muscle mass itself all right, and then if you go down a couple, we're gonna skip over body water, TBW, we're gonna skip over that for now, it's your bone mass. So if you add your bone mass to your muscle mass, it'll give you your fat-free mass, okay? And then uh, let's look at the total body water. So total body water, you know, our body's mostly function on water. So we should be about 60% water. Your bones, uh, your muscles hold water, fat does not. So fat is a non-active tissue, so it's basically not doing you any good. You need some to an extent, for internal organs to operate and digestive system to operate and for some bodily functions. But excessive body fat means your body's just storing toxins and waste into those fat cells and it just puts you at more risk for disease. So too much fat is bad, all right? And now let's look. Um, uh, so total body water for females should be between 45 and 60 and total body water percentage, percentage, for females should be between 45 and 60. Total body water for males should be between 50 and 65, okay? So you see here, this is actually right after a workout. I came home and did the test, so I was dehydrated, so it's a little bit low. Most of you guys did it before your workout, but it was in the morning, so you still could be a little bit dehydrated, so that could affect. 
and have a little bit low total body water. And it could actually cause your body fat percentage to be a little bit high because this uses an electrical impedance signal, which if you're dehydrated, there's less water in your muscles for that signal to transmit, okay? So, but it's not a big difference. It might be a, a percent or two, if that, okay? So uh, next is your, uh, your bone mass. So for ladies, it should be between, I mean, three, some three and a half and like seven pounds bones. Guys should be between like six and 12 pounds of bones, okay? So uh, that's for your bone mass, okay? Next is your BMR, all right? So your BMR is your basal metabolic rate. It's how many calories you burn while at home, not doing anything, uh, but not sleeping either. So while you're awake, but just chill. And that's how many calories you're burning a day. And that's where you want to start with how many calories you intake. For those of you who have never counted calories, you got to do it at some point to get an idea of how many calories you're taking in and what that feels like and what that looks like. And then after you've done it for a while, then you don't need to do it anymore. You can just eat instinctively, just kind of look at the calories and your diet should be fairly regular. You should have some staples in your diet that you're eating on a regular basis. So it shouldn't be like a lottery every day. Because then, if you're not counting calories, you're just putting yourself at high risk. So you should have some staples in your diet that you eat on a regular basis. Even if you rotate, you know, staples. You know, like one week oatmeal, one week grits, one week, you know, egg whites. You know, it can be something like that and uh, just rotating. But you should have some staples, something that you can eat on a regular basis. Okay? Chicken, fish, whatever it may be. All right. Uh, so, um, next is your metabolic age here. All right? So your metabolic age is just basically saying, if we were to take all these factors and put them together, your metabolism would be operating as efficient as the average blank year old. So my, my metabolism operating at the average of a 21 year old, all right? So, it sh so ideally it should be younger than your actual age. 15, 20, 25 years younger is excellent. That means you take good care of yourself. If you're if your metabolic age is worse than your actual age or higher than your actual age, that means you need to do a better job of taking care of yourself. I don't care how much working out you do, if you go home and eat junk, you're still going to put yourself at risk. All right. So I know we got some people who are undisciplined with your diets. And frankly, if you're not going to let me help you, I can't help you. So you got to do, you got to assign yourself to some accountability, uh, which come with some responsibility on your end. But if you're just going to play the I'm just going to ignore it and try to outwork it game, then you're putting yourself at risk. All right. So it's just keeping it real. So you got you have the resources here and me to help you to achieve your goals and get yourself healthy. So utilize them. Don't be in there busting your butt all this time and still making yourself sick by going home and eating junk. It's just not going to work. All right. Uh, plus, it's a bad reflection on me and I don't, we don't need that. All right. So uh, next is your visceral fat rating. All right, so your visceral fat, visceral fat rating. All right, your visceral fat is around your internal organs. So you need some of that for, like I said, um, internal organ operation, uh, menstrual cycle for women, digestion for everybody. So you need some of it, but having too much of it puts you at risk. Having too low of it can cause problems with, with those issues, but we don't have anybody who's risking having too low body fat. Okay, so if you have too much visceral fat, if your visceral fat is 10, 11, 12, if it's 13, we have a serious problem. 13 or more, we have a serious problem. Because now you have all this fat being stored around your internal organs and it's gonna show on the outside in your stomach and your gut. Um, you have all these toxins stored around your internal organs and it puts you at serious risk for disease. So that's a very serious number. The metabolic age and the visceral fat number are very serious numbers. So either one of those numbers and your body fat percentages, body fat percentage is more so, hey, if you want your body, if you want to look better, get your body fat percentage lower. But we're talking about health related issues. Your metabolic age is higher then that likely means that your visceral fat number is going to be high as well. So if you're 10, 11, 12, 13, then you need to talk to me immediately if you haven't already. And let's get to work on that. All right. So you can sit on the sidelines and play the silent game if you want. And then your butt ends up sick. All right. And then I'm not going to feel sorry for you because I told you over and over again. All right. So uh, next is your BMI. All right. So here's how I look at BMI. My BMI is high. It's 28. Uh, so technically I'm like in the borderline obese category, but I have, I have muscle mass. So 
BMI's only height to weight ratio. It does not take into accountability anything whatsoever. It doesn't take accountability your muscle mass, doesn't take accountability your age, nothing. Okay, so for those of us who work out, uh, I would like to see low 20s, low to mid 20s for ladies, and low to high 20s for guys. All right, but that needs to correspond with a low body fat percentage number. Okay, if your body fat percentage is high outside of the desirable range, then it's not acceptable for your BMI to be high. So it's conditional, all right? So if you have low body fat and your BMI is high, that's okay, because that just means you have excess muscle mass, which is adding to your weight number. And like I said, it's only height to weight ratio. It doesn't take into account any other factors. Okay, so, um, if your fat percentage is out of the desirable range, higher than your desirable range, and your BMI is high, then we need to work on reducing both of those to reducing weight, to reducing body fat percentage, and your BMI will go down also, okay? So, um, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, this is your desirable range for fat percentage in this box here, all right? And then, uh, so I put a target on there for everybody, and some are more aggressive than others. Uh, but this box just will tell you if you were to lose all fat, how uh, much you would weigh once you lost all fat. So um, to get to that percentage. So it's not likely to be that exact weight because you're likely to add some muscle in order to burn the fat. So probably about five to seven pounds heavier than that you know, of added muscle will help you to reduce your fat. Okay, so, so just add five to seven pounds and then shoot for that weight, that target weight, and then you can get your body fat to that percentage, okay? So, uh, and so it just tells you how much fat you would lose and uh, your predicted fat mass at the time. So, uh, and then down here, your BMI is a number that you want to be in this box, unless your body fat is low, then it's okay. If your body fat's in an acceptable range, then it's okay to be to the right of the dashes that um, are that encompass the, the zero here. So this is the standard, the middle standard. So this is the range that you wanna be in. Unless your body fat is low, then it's okay to be to the right. If you're to the right and your body fat percentage is to the right as well, then you have a problem, okay? And we need to address it, all right? Um, and here's your visceral fat. Like I said before, this is that number that you don't want to be too high. So visceral fat, you don't want that number to be very high. You want that number to be low, all right? Low, even lower than what I got. You can even go lower than that, all right? I've seen one, all right? I've seen one on this chart, okay? Uh, and then your muscle mass is one that you want to be far to the right. So you want this number here, sorry. You want this number here to be as far right as possible. So you want good muscle mass and uh, you want high BMR. So this number to be to the right as well. So. That's it, guys. We'll do this probably once a quarter. So get to work on your diets. Those of you who have given me, given me goal sheets, be diligent reporting your weights. I'm not, I don't have time to babysit you or chase you down for weights. It's your responsibility. It's your life. It's your weight. It's your goal. All right? I'm here to help. I'm not here to babysit you. So all I'm asking you to do is get up, get on your scale, send me a text message. It's not that much effort. And it's something that you should be doing anyway. I do it every day. So you can do it every day. So... Uh, just stay diligent, guys. Like I said, I'm here to help. Let's accomplish our goals, man. Why are we getting up at 5.30 in the morning working out if we're not going to accomplish our goals? We're not just going to come and go through the motions and still be in the same place next year. If we're going to get up and work hard, let's go ahead and accomplish goals while we're at it. just takes a couple more steps extra. It takes a little bit extra effort to go ahead and do what needs to be done and accomplish those goals. And, and a simple in concept, and it's not easy to pass up all the work lunches and all the junk that they bring into the office or stuff you pass by and the candy and the habits that you've built that you have to break. It's not, it's not necessarily going to be easy, but you got to decide and prioritize your health and your goals over your cravings. All right. So that's, that's just what it is, man. So keep working guys. I'm here to help. So utilize the resource that you have. I say that over and over again. Come talk to me. I never get tired of talking about it. Let's keep talking about it. Let's work through it. All right. And we'll get, we'll get those goals accomplished. All right. There's why signing out. Please let me know if you got any questions. I'll let you guys later. Peace.